An engaging, eye-catching thumbnail is crucial to make a video stand out on YouTube and to get more views. Most people don't even read the titles, they just click on a video if the thumbnail looks interesting. In this tutorial, I will continue to explain ways to make thumbnails more engaging using graphic design principles and compositional techniques. Contrast is one of the most important aspects of design and it also applies to YouTube thumbnails. And you can utilize contrast in many different ways. You can either put contrasting colors together, contrasting tonal values together, and you can also create contrast by using adjustments and filters like sharpening and saturation. Now here's a good example of a thumbnail that was auto-generated from the video itself. So this is something that you should always avoid and always make sure that you create a custom thumbnail instead of relying on the YouTube engine that would generate thumbnails for you. So this is the actual thumbnail on YouTube for the announcement trailer for season four for the amazing series called Last Kingdom on Netflix. And it, this is clearly just a snapshot from the video itself. It wasn't designed or created as a custom thumbnail. So I would like to show you how this can be improved by introducing contrast and make it more exciting. The best filter what I would normally use is the camera roll filter. But before you would normally apply this, you should choose convert for smart filters. That makes sure that the layer that you're working with is turned into a smart object. So then you can use it non-destructively. So I'm going to go into camera roll filter, which opens up this separate editing area. Now here, what you would normally want to do is to create almost like a HDR toning effect where you increase the shadows increase the exposure. Probably you can go even further than that, really exaggerate everything. And then you can probably increase highlights a little bit, whites and blacks. You can also drag to the right or the left, whichever creates more contrast in this case, dragging it to the left is probably better. Now I feel like we can still have a little bit more brightness here. And for this, I would use the adjustment brush with which I am going to paint over this darker part of the face. And then you can see we can selectively increase the exposure there as well. I am going to go back to the additional settings. And once we have the tonal values set up correctly, so we can see before and after, I'm just pressing P on the keyboard, that already made a huge difference. And don't forget, we are always thinking on using a small thumbnail because that's what people are going to see. We are not seeing the whole image. So for this small detail, it has to really pop and be very expressive. And to increase the contrast even further, we can add also clarity. So that's usually works quite nicely. We can also maybe add a little bit of dehaze. However, I think in this case, that's not helping. But what's definitely going to help is to increase vibrance and saturation. So that once again, from a distance, you will see it actually works okay. When we look at it close up, it can be overcooked. And of course, I wouldn't use this on a poster, but for a YouTube thumbnail, which is tiny, it's these exaggerated adjustments and uh, changes that's going to make it work. Now, one other thing that I would normally do is to also add sharpening. So from the sharpen tab, we can increase sharpening. And once again, you can go crazy. Normally, I wouldn't go this far, but because we are working on a thumbnail, I would normally do this. Maybe add a little bit of noise reduction just so you don't start introducing also a lot of noise into the composition. But now if we accept these changes, we can see before and after. Obviously, that's a huge difference, especially when you look at this in a small size like this before and after. Massive difference. Last time we talked about the importance of using headshots in your thumbnails and also the out of bounds effect to create depth. Now, one effect or technique that can be very effective to utilize is the sticker effect, which you can see really well utilized here on Jazz's thumbnail. So that white outline with a subtle drop shadow around it is the one that I'm talking about. And this is a very simple technique. So just to show you how to do this, let's return to our Last Kingdom thumbnail. So here, all I'm going to do is to go to the select menu and choose select subject. 
which is going to select our main character. Now we just need to refine this selection a bit. So I'm going to use the magic wand tool. Holding down Alt or Option, I can paint over sections that I don't need to be selected. And then I'm without holding down any keyboard shortcuts, I am just going to select the sword here on the left side. And I think that's pretty much what I needed in this selection. So now all I need to do is to turn this into an outline. And the easiest way to do that is to create a separate layer, just a blank layer, and then fill in this selection with a color. It can be any color. I'm just using alter option backspace, which is going to fill in with my foreground color. Then I'm using command or control D to get rid of the selection. And by the way, at this point with your brush tool, you can refine parts of this selection. So this way I can very clearly see if there's any overlapping details that were missed by the selection tool. But then this is the important part. What you want to do is to add the actual stroke or outline by using the layer styles, double click on the layer and then choose stroke. And you will see that I already have the white color selected with a thick size and the position set to outside. And I can always increase, decrease the size if I want, but I'm just going to click OK for now. And I can see there's a couple of details here that shouldn't be visible. So for these, I'm going to use the eraser tool and just very quickly delete that. Now that I'm happy with the result, all I have to do is to reduce the fill opacity. So reducing that will keep the stroke visible or any layer styles that are on this layer and it will make the actual contents, which was that fill color completely transparent. But to make the sticker effect work even better, I can then go back into the layer styles and also add drop shadow, which will separate it even better from the background. We can increase the opacity. Maybe also we can add a little bit more distance and spread and size to whatever effect you like. Don't forget, you can also drag and move the shadow around while you are clicking on the thumbnail. And that's going to create an even more separated a more sticker-like effect. Another effective composition that you can utilize in your YouTube thumbnails is to create a division between the left and the right side. So it can be used for before and after, or it can be used to compare certain things. And we've already seen this used in some of these thumbnails, but let's just take a closer look at some of them. For instance, we have a nice face off here between PewDiePie and a character from Minecraft, which once again goes back to using headshots. So we have two very effective headshots here, but then we also have this nice separation or division between the two sides of the frame. There's also a little bit of overlap created or out of bounds effect utilized with the hands overlapping the details in the background. And remember, we talked about the exaggerated expression using the liquify filter. Another example of this divided composition would be Jazz's thumbnail, where we have Jazz's headshot as the divider between two compositions, the one on the left and then the one on the right. Now, the blur effect that we can see here is also a very common technique that's used to make you want to click on the thumbnail. So especially if there is like a final result or a reveal in the video, that's usually not a good idea to show in your thumbnail because then people won't be that interested to see what it is all about. So using blur effect for that reason can be very effective in thumbnails, which we can also see with Peter McKinnon. He's showing the one on the left side, which was the cheaper design, but then we have a quite strong blur here on the right side with the more expensive design, which once again makes us excited and interested to see what it actually looks like. And then last but not least, I would like to remind you not to use the bottom right corner of your thumbnail for important details, because that's where the time code is going to show up. So you can see that most of these creators are aware of that and they intentionally keep this section here on the bottom right completely empty. So once again, we have an empty space here. Also IGN intentionally keeps that area empty. So this is where the time code would normally show up. The only thumbnail out of all of these where it would overlap an important information would be Peter McKinnon's because there the $200 would actually be hard to read because of the time code.
I hope you found these tips useful, but feel free to use the comment section below if you have any other suggestions that might help to make YouTube thumbnails more effective. Thanks a lot for watching. Like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever we release new videos. Click on the link on my right and start your membership today to get access to over 200 hours of training courses and personal mentoring by me and my team of creative professionals. Have fun learning guys and I will see you in the next one.